Today, in celebration of St. Patrick's Day, I'm making, can you guess? Got secret ingredients here. We're making traditional Guinness brown bread, which is found all over Ireland. It's one of my favorite treats that I had while I was in Ireland. As you guys know, if you've subscribed to our channel, we've been to Ireland. Our video is one of the top guides on Dublin. We visited the Guinness storehouse and they had this there as well as many other Guinness based recipes. I'll link our vlog up here, but as I'm baking and as I'm eating, I will answer some of your questions that you asked us in our Dublin vlog. So stay tuned and cook along with me. Before we begin, be sure to like and subscribe down below for more travel videos. So this recipe calls for just a few dry ingredients and a few wet ingredients, including our friend Guinness. All right, so as you can see, I mixed up all of my dry ingredients and I'm making a well in the middle and this is where our wet ingredients are gonna go in. Ah, here's the main attraction. Next up, we have a little bit of buttermilk. To give it that real decadent flavor, we have molasses. So this bread is slightly sweet in a good way. Lastly, we are adding a little bit of butter and make sure it's Kerrygold just to be authentic. So here's what the wet and the dry ingredients looks like mixed together. And you can really smell that roasted barley flavor and that delicious molasses scent. You can use a bread pan or I have a tin here for muffins. So our last bit of the batter is going into the muffins. So we're gonna have these bread muffins. And somebody is really wanting some. You do, huh? So now this is gonna go into the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. Let's go. All right, so in less than an hour, we're gonna have Guinness brown bread. I'm so excited. And now it's time for me to answer your questions about Dublin. Someone asked if you need a ticket to drink at the Guinness storehouse. Well, the ticket to the Gravity Bar actually comes with your storehouse experience and you get to drink the real thing in the place where it was originally brewed over 250 years ago. So at the Guinness Storehouse, you can take a tour and you can learn how Guinness is made. You can learn how to pour a pint. It takes a few hours for the whole experience, but it's really more like a museum of how beer is created. It also talk about the roasted barley and you can smell it. It's multi-sensory as you walk through. And the cafe is excellent and that's where you can get this brown bread. Another great thing is the drinking age in Dublin is 18. Someone asked about visiting Ireland as a heritage trip. Ireland has a record number of visitors visiting their Irish heritage. In fact, I read that 6.6 .6 million people visit for their Irish heritage and there's a lot of ancestral tourism there. Someone asked, is it expensive in Dublin? And of course, I didn't live there. I just visited there as a traveler. I looked up the average cost of a beer. Let's use that as our barometer. It's 650 euros. That would be seven US dollars. A beer in my city in the US goes for an average $8. So kind of on par, but for me, it didn't break the bank visiting Ireland. I definitely recommend visiting and saving money, maybe saving a little cushion to go to some of the pubs because you're gonna wanna order a beer. You're gonna wanna order some of that delicious pub food. In our video, we visited a bar called the church, and it was a church that was transformed into a bar. This is blasphemy. This is madness. And someone asks, why did this happen? It's a very unusual sight. And someone said, Jesus liked drinking wine. So yeah, that could be the reason. But the real reason, and I looked it up, is that this church was founded in 1697, and it's called St. Mary's Parish. During the time, the area was mostly a residential area. There were quite a bit of Protestant people, including the devout Protestant Arthur Guinness, the founder of Guinness Beer. And he actually got married there in this church. And you can see his statue in the church. You know, he was devout and he, he founded the first Sunday school in Dublin. Anyway, later on in history, there was a falling 
population of Protestant people and also a change in the area from residential to commercial. So basically this church was in shambles for a while. It shut down in the 80s and then was later purchased and transformed into a bar. But you can still see a lot of the church elements, including the organ, still preserved in the bar. It's coming along. You can see the bread rising, the oats up top. All right, it's the moment of truth. The moment we've all been waiting for. Get us bread. They almost look like little rolls. Okay, you guys, it just came out of the oven. My kitchen smells amazing. And I've prepared a little bit of tea to go with it. And I can't wait to break open this bread. They kind of came out like little rolls, which I really like this idea because it's almost like pre-sliced or pre-portioned. And I'm gonna pair it with a little bit of jam. Mm. Oh my goodness. You guys. You guys have to make this at home. Let me know if you do and comment below. It's a little piece of Ireland right here at home. Of course, there's no substitute for actually traveling to Ireland. Until then, this is where it's at. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Slancha!